All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about ladder anxiety. Ladder anxiety is something which people have been asking me about for years, and they're always saying, you know, how can I stop being so nervous, so anxious when I'm going into playing a ladder match? Today, we're going to break down the most common types of ladder anxiety and causes of it, as well as try and offer you guys a bunch of suggestions, tools, and, and tips for your mindset so you can get to the point of playing the game for fun and enjoyment and improvement and not being so worried about clicking find match. So this all started when I noticed a lot of people asking me in my chat and in my comment section about ladder anxiety and if I could do a video addressing it. So I put out a poll into the community and I was just flabbergasted by the amount of responses, not only the sheer number, but also the fact that it felt like some of them were these really personal stories of people getting really mad playing or just getting so off put by the, the shakiness and, and the feelings of just pure anxiety overwhelming their body they'd have when playing. And I managed to, as I read all these, start to categorize it into a few main categories and causes of this latter anxiety. Before we dive into those themes, let's actually define anxiety quickly. Anxiety is when your response to a situation is excessive and you feel an all-consuming worry and obsession with the outcome of that. This is often accompanied by increased heart rate, uh, breathing rapidly, sweating, trembling, and the inability to focus on anything other than the current concern. So a lot of you would have felt varying levels of this. Some of you may have felt you were just too overwhelmed to click that 1v1 match button. Instead, open up a Twitch stream, open up another YouTube video, open up another Nexus Wars arcade map, and just kind of find reasons to avoid clicking find match, even though there's a part of you that really does want to play it. We've of course all felt the, the kind of rush of excitement and adrenaline from an exciting StarCraft match, but when you're feeling so nervous that your hands are shaking that you can't really control your units, you're breathing rapidly or hyperventilating and you're out of breath at the end of the game, the sweat dripping down your body. These are all situations where it goes a bit too far and it does just massively impede your ability to have fun. Okay, so the three main categories of causes of anxiety fall into these. Number one, and that is overwhelmed as a new player. There's so much information coming at you, so much raw data and a feeling of just being lost in an ocean of too much information, too overwhelmed can cause a lot of anxiety in new players. The second one is if you identify at too much as being at a certain skill level and you feel like you should always perform at that level, that can cause people to fall into a lot of mental pitfalls and traps where they stop enjoying the game and they start stressing out over the outcome. Lastly, but definitely not least, it will be fear of losing MMR, losing to other people, and that whole psychology of 1v1 competition that goes into that, which causes a lot of people issues. All three of these do overlap a fair bit. We're gonna go through them one by one and outline how we can try and address them. Okay, so first of all, StarCraft is just not that good at onboarding new players. RTS games in general are very overwhelming. There is so many different tasks you can do. And for a new player, it just feels like too much information coming their way at once. Obviously, if you're a competitive gamer, you're going to pick it up a bit quicker, right? If you're someone who's played other competitive games, you kind of understand the language of gaming and that there's certain things you can do. You understand how to execute things quickly and you start to pick things up faster. However, if you have no RTS experience and no competitive gaming experience, you are just lost at sea. I mean, for context, I, as an RTS veteran, whenever I play a new RTS game I'm not familiar with, the first few hours are mentally taxing. I feel like there's so much information I'm trying to suck up. I'm reading tooltips, I'm figuring out the resource system, figuring out how the workers and the mining works and the abilities work, and it's so much going on. And if the opponent also comes and attacks me during those games as well, I just feel like a massive mental overwhelm. If I feel that as an expert in the RTS genre, I can only imagine what it's like for newcomers. Part of the attraction of StarCraft as well as you watch it, and there's so many varied strategies. It's so fun to watch because there's so many options. That also means when you're playing it for the first time, your opponents throw all these different crazy things at you and getting a handle on how to deal with those is well beyond the knowledge of most beginning players. Obviously, if you have a bad run in your first games, that might be it. You might say, no, nah, this isn't for me, never playing again. And that's what I really want to avoid. I know that happens to so many people who try RTS and don't really get onboarded. Um, thankfully, some people play co-op or play with a friend and they have a bit of a smoother process with someone showing them the ropes, but that's kind of inconsistent. So if you are starting out, you don't have a friend showing you team games or co-op to get started with, I have the most important tip to avoid getting just trapped in this ocean of information and feel like you're just a bit of driftwood caught up in, in, in a storm, in a tempest. My number one rule is don't expect to win. Now I know this is kind of crazy, 
but unlike most competitive games out there, StarCraft 2 doesn't start you in the middle, uh, in the bottom of the ladder, it starts you in the middle, and it gives you a very flexible algorithm. Now this helps combat if someone who's very experienced makes a new account, it's very quickly going to go, oh, you're winning all your games from the middle, bam, I'm going to put you up in Masters, up in GM very quickly. However, if you're a brand new player and you're playing someone in Platinum League who's probably played hundreds or thousands of games, you are going to get your butt kicked. Fortunately, there is a flexible algorithm, okay? So every game you win or lose, it'll put you massively up or down. And for the first 25 games, it'll do that, where it very uh, quickly and rapidly adjusts to find where you belong. Now, of course, if you're a brand new player going in, a lot of people assume they're playing people of similar rank and they're like, cool, I'm, a new, I'm brand new, surely I'm playing other brand new players. So they really get down on themselves or they feel like, whoa, man, I'm just getting smashed. And that is why if you truly are new to RTS, new to competitive RTS, new to StarCraft 2 ladder completely, there's a lot of people who just recommend to their friends. They say, dude, just leave your five placement matches, maybe even leave a few more games beyond that. So you actually get put down in Silver League or, or maybe even Bronze League, and you can start playing and working your way up from there where it's not going to be as ridiculously intense as playing Platinum, Diamond, Gold League players in your first few games. So now that you know that you shouldn't really be expecting to win your first games and that you're actually meant to be kind of losing those to get down to a more realistic spot on the ladder, the next thing is actually having a build. Now this is especially challenging as a newcomer because you're like, I don't know anything about the game, how can I ever build? So this starts just as a really general game plan. It could be something like, I'm gonna make a lot of roaches with Zerg and go for a big attack. Something very general like that. I'm gonna go for a mass marine and see if I can overwhelm my opponent, uh, you know, attack off two bases. Really simple plans to start. I wanna make mass stores, I wanna make battle cruisers. As long as you have a plan and an attack in mind, you're already gonna be playing with a lot more direction than most new players. And hopefully it allows you to put your blinders on and just focus on the pertinent information for you achieving that thing rather than the thousands of distractions that are out there. I use this exact same technique in any strategy game I play, any board game. There's always overwhelming mechanics and all these things to learn. I see a lot of people just kind of check out and go, oh, too much information, ah, ah, overload. But what I do is I pick a strategy, even if I don't really understand how the strategy works in that game, I try to make it happen. And that way I learn a lot more quickly and figure out like what works with that strategy and what doesn't. Now, of course, this is still beyond most new players. You guys, I, I can't, I don't even know what all the units are, Pick, how can I decide to do that? I get it. And this is why I do think the best way to help on board is if you don't have a friend showing you the ropes and all that sort of stuff, follow along with a video series. There's so many tutorial series out there. A Bronze to GM is usually the most accessible for a new player and heaps of people in the StarCraft community have done Bronze to GMs. You can check out my one for your race, depending on your race, they're all linked down below in the description. But the idea there is if you're following along, you can kind of learn, oh, this is what the buttons do. Oh, this is kind of what a general good starting game plan is. Select this hatchery, build three drones, click on the gas. Go to the natural, build three drones, click on the gas, reselect the hatchery, build three drones, click on the gas. It's gonna demystify that early stage of StarCraft, give you some general plans that can kind of work in most scenarios, and it allows you to have some actual goalposts telling you what to do in a game which otherwise is like, go free and um, try to figure out how to win. We're not really gonna tell you how, <laughs> you're just gonna feel lost and overwhelmed. So follow along with a video series or a guide so you have that build, you have that game plan, and this can allow you to focus on just a few things at a time, because I guarantee you guys, even me as an expert StarCraft player, I'm still learning things every day about this game. There's so many different things to think about and understand. You can't hold it all in your head and don't ever expect to get there. The real trick is simplifying your focus. Focus on just a couple things at a time. And the simpler that plan is when you start out, the more enjoyable the game is. All right, guys, on to our second cause of ladder anxiety. And this one's a big one. It is tying and anchoring our ego to a certain skill level or MMR, a point on the ladder and saying, that is how good I am and I will always perform at that level. What's funny about this is we usually identify this level as being at our absolute peak MMR. As you can imagine, that's not very realistic. That's a peak uh, for a reason. There's always gonna be a natural variance depending on many different factors in StarCraft. So obviously tying yourself to a peak is not realistic. Not only are we are often unrealistic about where we are on the ladder, but we start to sometimes look down on our opponent's strategies and say, oh, that strategy is less optimal than mine. My opponent's a baboon, they are an idiot. This is, what, this is what happens if you listen to my videos too much. I keep calling people baboons. Bad mindset, don't do it guys, it's a trap, don't do it. 
But honestly, like if people are playing like like in a strategy that you think is less optimal, you don't respect it at all. Um, just think about what that does. Because if you you lose to that strategy, you just feel super terrible about it, right? You're like, oh God, I'm such an idiot. What the hell, man? It's really easy to go from there. Just to go down the rabbit warren of seeing every single loss as proof that you suck at the game. Because if you're not respecting your opponents and appreciating the diverse strategies and situations, it's easy to just see every time you lose the game as you performing worse than you should, right? There's this unrealistic expectation that you're always gonna perform at a peak, which is unrealistic because it's your peak. It's unrealistic because sometimes you wake up on the, the wrong side of the bed, you're not gonna be as focused. Sometimes you had a long day at work and you're tired. Sometimes you're encountering different strategies that you're, not, you're just not as used to playing against. It's a very high variance game. StarCraft, there's so many different strategies. Look, you might be a god at PVT, and then the meta changes because Maru does a cool Widow Mine drop build. Everyone's dropping Widow Mines all game. You're not used to playing against it and you're getting your butt kicked. A lot of players in this scenario go, ah, oh, I'm losing games, I'm losing MMR, I'm going down. I'm an idiot, idiot. Oh, I can't believe this is stupid. These are dumb things. They're just dropping Widow Mines. There's so many, all these excuses that pop up where you're doing anything but just saying, hey, this is a new strategy. I'm not, I haven't played against it much. It's gonna take new responses that I need to learn hey, let's be like compassionate with myself for a moment here and just go, all right, let's give myself a second to actually, like, what do I need to do to do better here? My opponents are doing this new strategy. They're executing it really well. Like, man, I got to put in some effort to get better at this. But if you're too busy getting angry at yourself, you can't take a moment to just kind of go, what can I do better? Let's be humble. Let's learn from this experience because you're too busy going, idiot, idiot, idiot. Why am I not performing at the level that I should be? So try to be compassionate with yourself, give yourself a break and go, okay, wow, that was a hard situation. What can I do better? Save that energy rather than getting angry at yourself and, and try to be curious about how to solve the problem instead. If you're actually able to see it as a constant problem solving experience, rather than getting upset at yourself for not, you know, hitting these unrealistic standards you have, you actually learn to roll with the punches better, not just after the game, but in the game as well, rather than pulling yourself out of the moment by getting really angry at yourself for messing up and losing some probes to a widow mind drop. Go, whoa, I just lost some probes to a widow mind drop. <laughs> all right, what can I do from here? Let's roll with the punches, you know? And you find that throughout all levels of StarCraft, the players who can roll with the punches and adapt to bad situations are the ones who just have that next level quality. Think of Rain or think of Dark. These sort of guys like Hero who things can go terribly wrong and they roll with those punches like it's nothing. They are so comfortable in the chaos. Even when you're a baby player, even when you're in Gold League, learning a little bit of that grit and that ability to just continue through and figure things out, it's actually tied in with this mindset where if you've got unrealistic standards, you need to always be crushing and in control of every game, that's not something that is attainable. And uh, you're actually gonna slow down your own improvement and your enjoyment of the game because you're too busy getting upset at yourself rather than just playing the game and getting better and adapting to the many situations it throws at you. Now, of course, also, if you expect yourself to be at a certain level and, and then you win a game against a strategy that you disrespect or you win a game, but you feel it wasn't, you know, versus someone that's actually at your peak MMR that you identify as, you're going to actually also rob yourself of the joys of victory, which is a huge problem for a lot of players is they beat a player, they go, oh, it's just a dumb all in he did. <sighs> And it's like, no, dude, you just defended a bailing bust. Well done. High five yourself. Feel good about it. The aim here is don't rob yourself of the joys of victory. Feel good about the wins. And don't feel so bad about the losses. Be more realistic in your own expectations of yourself. Don't ever take victory as a given or an expectation. Absolutely every single victory is a sweet, sweet reward. And it's never something that is given freely. So this is all part of the bigger problem that a lot of us have with just judging ourselves constantly very harshly. Hopefully some of these mindset tips with StarCraft can maybe be the first baby steps to expanding that to the rest of our lives so we can stop being such dicks to ourselves and just be a little bit more compassionate with ourselves, cut ourselves a break once in a while. I still struggle with this whole problem on a daily basis, guys. I look at my MMR going up and down and sometimes I obsess over it too much. What I try to do to counteract this is I often do tricks like saying, okay, I'm 5,800 MMR today, but I'm actually 5,600. That's my identity because hey, I'm at a peak right now. I know I'm doing really well right now and this is awesome. And I want to say, no, 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 59 or 5873. That's my MMR. That's how good I am. But it's not realistic because 
I'm not always going to play at 110% in the situations, in the strategies that I know how to play perfectly. So I always just knock about 200 MMR off my actual rank and say, hey, that's my real rank. So if I want to say I'm a 6k player, I actually need to get to at least 6.1, probably 6.2 MMR. Then I can claim I'm a 6k player. I also mentally prepare myself whenever I'm playing a new strategy. I know new strategy, new things I'm not used to. MMR is going to go up and down a lot. And that's totally fine. It's gonna usually go down a lot when I'm learning a new strategy. So I kind of brace myself and prepare for that. And I just focus on the details of improving the strategies. And I'm not gonna be looking at my MMR as much as if I'm say, I'd be tracking that more if I'm practicing only my best strategies that I already have really well refined, then I might put a little bit more weight on actually looking at my ranking. One of the best habits you can build to really embody this mindset is when you guys are looking at replays, don't just look at things that you can, you know, you could do better, right? Especially if you're an improvement based gamer, it's really easy. And I always coach people on a daily and weekly basis where I go, okay, hey, break down this replay. What do you think you could do better? And they can point out a thousand things they did wrong a lot of the time and nothing they did right. It's important to really have a whole picture that go, hey, I, I actually aced my build up to seven minutes. Macro is perfect. Check this out. All the workers were on the right bases. I did all these details nicely, didn't get supply blocked once. That should feel really good. Now, you maybe didn't, you forgot the key scout timing that you normally do and you died to a big attack because you didn't see it coming. A lot of people just for, ah, I didn't scout, gosh. But if you can just go, wait a second, I actually, most of what I did in that game, 90% was absolutely mint. And that's awesome. Pat myself on the back, feel good about it. But on the other hand, I also, if I added that scout to it, this would have been a perfectly aced game. So when I hit peak mindset, I'm actually enjoying the losses as much as the wins because I'm seeing what I'm doing well in a more, I have a more realistic view, right? I take a lot of the ego and this stuff out and this is not every day. Sometimes you guys see me get very upset and tilted and I'm all in my own head about it. But when I'm at my peak mindset, I'm much more focused on like, hey, I just played a great game. I did this well, this well, this well. There was definitely some things that went wrong. I lost the game but my opponent played so good. It was really fun. I adapted to these scenarios. I was really proud of how I handled this unfamiliar situation. And I can look at the replay and kind of refine my understanding of how to do better next time. But I can enjoy that process and be really curious and kind of like humble and just be learning the game. I wish I could feel that way every day. Anyone who watches my stream knows that's not what I'm like every single day, but that's the goal and it's always a work in progress. Okay, so the last part for this section, and this is so many players these days in StarCraft 2, and you guys have a huge problem with this whole tying your identity to a certain rank. The problem is that you're old. That's right, you're ancient. You're rotting away, you're dinosaurs. There's a lot of people watching this video who I'm sure can relate to this. Uh, you know, when I was coming up as a pro gamer, people thought if you were 25, you're, you're an esports grandpa. Well, guess what? A lot of people are in their 30s, 40s, 50s now. A lot of people have families, full-time jobs that are very demanding and all sorts of other life commitments, but they're still identifying as, oh, well, you know, I was masters in college. And I'm like, come on guys, you're not 18 anymore. You're not playing six hours a day. Is it realistic to still expect yourself and tie your own association of skill and ego to being a Masters level player? It's not, you play one or two hours a week now for fun with a beer in hand when you finally get a break from everything else that's going on. It might be time to recalibrate, have a think about why you're actually playing the game. So a lot of people in this scenario, they go, oh, well, yeah, I'm just playing for fun now, but you know. But in the back of their head, they haven't really fully made that step over and they're still going, oh man, I'm just beating plat players like, this is so meaningless. They're robbing themselves of the joy of victory. Enjoy winning those games. Enjoy it. And remember that just getting from plat two to plat one, that is actually a meaningful achievement for where you are in your StarCraft career now. Getting from gold two to gold one is a more meaningful achievement, even though you used to be Diamond League back in the day. And that's fine. Enjoy those steps. So just remember, don't live in this past expectation of where you were. If you can't play as much, you're definitely going to have to lower your expectations of yourself and recalibrate something that's more realistic for how much you're practicing and how hardcore you're playing. Likewise, it might not even be about improving anymore what you enjoy now as you get older. It might be more and more just about, I love doing marine drops and I'm going to miss macro while I do it. But by golly, am I going to do mass marines and medevacs every game and just try and drop my opponent to death because I enjoy doing that. So engineer the situations that you find fun and whether it's your improvement focused or otherwise, try and move the focus away from the victory defeat screen. We want to find joy in the process of playing the game.
You can still refine your strategies and improve if you want to, but do not rob yourself of the joy of victory and having fun playing the game. There is no point where you become a good player. People always ask, when will I become a good player? There is no point where that happens, where you used to be higher, although it doesn't matter. You're still a bloody awesome StarCraft player, having fun, and you're a valued member of this beautiful StarCraft community. So keep kicking ass, having fun, and stop devaluing your own experiences, guys. All right, so our third reason is probably the biggest one. This one is fear of losing MMR, losing rank, and losing to other players. Whenever I get into another competitive game and start grinding it for a little bit, this one always creeps up on me. Early on, I don't care because I'm just having fun screwing around. Once I start to see myself rise up those ranks a little bit and I see those promotions coming in, I get a little bit more focused on that, that rank screen going up and I still feel like, yeah, I'm gonna win every game. And, ooh, and I really don't wanna let go of those promotions and those beautiful endorphin rushes that I've been getting. And every single time I get that, that payoff, I want more and more of that and I, also get very risk averse about losing games and working my way back up to where I am on the ladder. A lot of people feel this way in StarCraft, especially because it's a 1v1 game. A lot of people feel like it's just undoing all of their hard work. Like, oh man, I, I tried so hard. I hit my peak MMR. And you know what? If I lose a game, think about how hard it was to get here. It's going to be that hard to get back here. But that's just not true. That's not how it works. If you hit a skill level, you are that skill level. It's not like, oh, I didn't ride a bike for two days and then I forgot how to ride a bike. It's, that's not that's not how it works. Yet for some reason we think this in, in video games, they're like, oh, it was so hard to get that rank. It'll be hard to get it again. It's like, no, no, no. If you've put in the work to get that rank, then you are that skill level, right? You, you should relatively easily be able to get back to that skill level. Now, if it was a peak in your MMR, you're not really at that skill level. You just had a bit of a, it's, it's, it's the natural top of your variance, right? So this is why I'm regularly reminding myself, guys, my actual MMR is not the highest MMR I've had in the last two weeks. Everyone, you ask them their MMR, what do they say? They always think it what's, what's the highest it's been in the last, like, sometimes they even go like three or six months. They're like, oh, it was 4.2K. And I'm like, no, 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 like, what is it today? And they're like, well, 3.9, but like, but it was 4.2K at this point. That's not your real MMR. That was a peak. Stop, stop using that. And, and, and being like, oh, I can't dip below that. Don't worry. So this is, like I said, kind of overlaps with point number two, but stop obsessing over that. And just remember, if, if you actually just focus on developing your skills, you'll easily surpass that. And I regularly try a new build or a style, drop 400 MMR with one of my races. And as soon as I figure out that style and get good at it, I climb right back up. I get right back to my skill level. Whenever you're doing new styles, you're playing against new strategies or in general working on new skills, you will drop. And then whenever you get to the point where you're refining it to a really sharp polish, you'll get back up towards the peak. There's a natural up and down unless you just play the exact same build orders every single game. Like, I don't know, you just proxy three racks it all in every game or something like that. There's an up and down. So. Remember, it's not something that just disappears. If you've got the skill to get there, you will be able to get there again. A lot of people feel that because you're playing an actual person, it's rather intense. And I even remember playing chess competitions as a kid. And then like the first time I played a tennis competition and also feeling the same thing where I grew up playing team sport my whole life, but there's an intensity to one versus one. Anything where you're like, ooh, I'm pitted with another human and one of us wins and one of us loses. There's a lot of responsibility and judgment you're feeling there. But essentially, we're just looking at something which we do just get very competitive with and we feel like we're really like there's something more on the line than there really is. But think of it as practice. Think of it as sport. Think of it as screwing around with your buddy throwing a football around. That's really what StarCraft is. You're not Serral. You're not Maru. You're not, you're not Hero or Trap. I guarantee you, like, it's you are just throwing a ball around in the park. It's it's way more chill than you think it is. People go too far down this line. They start really seeing their StarCraft rank as a reflection of their like nerd cred. StarCraft has this elitist kind of culture and awe around it. It's the hardest game. It's so elite. It's so cool. And, and people get like really focused on like you can only play it if you're an awesome player or like when you play it, you have to super try hard and grind. And it's always like this real struggle. I don't think it always has to be that. I think often it should be periods of like, yeah, you're working hard to improve, but there's also periods of just executing what you've already improved and letting that rhythm, flow state happen and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't always have to be this crazy stressful thing. And as a result, most players on the ladder have to remember like, come on, like half the time you are playing bloody Barry who works in HR at some place and is having a beer on a Friday night and screwing around doing some cannon rushes. Like it's, it's not, 
that serious for everybody playing the game. I'd say there's more people who are a little bit try hard when they're playing than Barry with a beer in hand. But there's just as many people who are just screwing around having some fun games. So definitely trying to remember that it is a bit more casual and we're not actually getting judged by it. Like this is something we do to just play and improve and have fun and enjoy ourselves. It can hopefully take some of that load off you. So you gotta remind yourself though, if you do really care about improving at StarCraft because you enjoy the game and you do see that rank as being a pretty accurate representation of you in the game, then guess what? Improving in the long run and getting better at that, if that's something that really matters to you, and it doesn't have to be, we'll talk about that in a moment, but if you do care about improving, that's only gonna come through losing lots of games. Think about if you've ever played uh, any old Mario game, or I think a great example is like a Souls game, right? If you've played Elden Ring, I mean, how many of you have literally lost a hundred times against the same boss, but be not that upset over it, right? Because you respawn, nothing is lost. You don't actually get your arm chopped off in real life. And you're slowly learning the timings. You're learning the openings, the tricks to take it down. You go back in there and you eventually beat it and you go, yeah, that felt good. Sometimes we forget that's exactly what you need to do to learn in StarCraft 2 as well is literally die to the first battle cruiser rush and the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and then finally you've got a response down and you can maybe beat it half the time or a bit more than that if you're really good and that's awesome that's what starcraft is you need to get those reps under your belt no game is one 100 percent of the time you gotta unless it's a, one of these really crappy easy call of duty games or something on, on an easy setting you die over and over until you master that level and i get starcraft throws more variable situations which makes it feel like it's not the same level over and over. It's, but it's many levels over and over again. And because we're up against other players, we kind of miss the fact that it's like, hey, you're still just learning how different situations work in game. There's just more of them coming your way. And I get it's a bit more expansive, but if you can take that mindset of losing to a bloody uh, toad or something in Mario, it's been, I can't remember what, what is it that kills you in Mario again? I don't even. So you fall off a platformer or something and you die and then you just try again, right? The whole point is it's that iterative experience and you actually embrace losing because that's part of it. If you're gonna embrace losing and, and dropping MMR is a good thing in StarCraft and reframe it, that's such a powerful mindset because whether you're improving or not, if you're just playing to have fun, it's the same thing. Either way, losing is part of you having fun. It's finding opponents that are at the right level for what you're working on at the time. Maybe you're really bad against the new Void Ray meta guess what? You lose 300 MMR, people go, oh man, I lost 300 MMR, this is crap. You're 300 MMR worse against the Void Ray meta. That's what the ladder's trying to teach you. And it's giving you a chance to play against lower opponents so you can figure out how to beat it there and then work your way back up. Everything is a learning opportunity or a chance for it to just put you against more even opponents. So accept the natural ups and downs and actually embrace it. I regularly will be like, man, I'm swapping from mech to bio in a matchup as Terran. And I go, okay, so what's my MMR, man? 5,300 right now. Okay, I'm gonna go down to like 4,900 while stopping from bio to mech because it's been like a year since I played mech in that matchup. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes, right? I accept I'm gonna lose four, 500 MMR and that is part of the process. And I kind of just go, cool, that's fine. We've reframed the goalpost. We're not caring so much about my rank going down because I'm embracing the fact that there is a natural ebb and flow with this at just losing some points on the ladder, it does not reflect you being any worse at the game, any stupider, or having any less value as a beautiful member of our StarCraft community. The real struggle in StarCraft and the thing that makes it a joy, but also a challenge, it's clicking fine match, losing to something that feels really overpowered, and instead of raging, it's asking the question, going, okay, how did I get my butt kicked by that? And Googling it, or going and looking up a video or rewinding and checking the replay saying, how did my opponent get 50 roaches so quickly? Like that just didn't feel fair. What happened in that game that I didn't understand? And if we can always just like look at it that way instead and smile through our losses, we hit that peak StarCraft mindset. And I find that once you get there, clicking find match is not very scary. And don't get me wrong guys, this is still variable for me as well. Some days it's harder than others where I'm like, oh, I'm a little nervous to click find match. Other days I'm just like, hell yeah, let's play. It's up and down and it's always something where whenever I start getting more nervous or more upset or more anxious in games, I gotta remind myself if I'm playing Valorant or something else that I get a bit more anxious about my ranking, I'm like, hey, what's the worst that happens? I play easier opponents, I can learn more about the game. Hey, let's just focus on something else. All right, I'm gonna try and just really focus on headshots today. That's gonna be my goal. I'm gonna use this character and these two guns, let's go. Suddenly I've got to focus, I can have fun in the game. And it's not about the win or lose screen, 
It's just, hey, I'm enjoying playing the game and just slowly getting in these losses and wins and using that all as experience to just get better at the game in the long run. Okay, so what about if you hate losing the game, but it's it's not an improvement thing for you as a player? So definitely, it doesn't have to be about improving, but if you are playing the game, it's what are you playing the game for? Think about the situations you enjoy in the game, because it's absolutely great to never improve and just enjoy. I'm a gold player and I'm never gonna change probably. If I go up, it's, it's almost an accident. I'm just trying to have fun in the game and play strategies I like. So think about what you enjoy. Do you enjoy backstabbing your opponent? Maybe you wanna go mass zealot. Flyer harass, mutalisks, let's go. Uh, maybe you just love watching Maru and the top Terran split and multi-prong bio. So you just play Marines, Marauders and Medivacs every matchup, every game and you just like to just throw that stuff at your opponent. If those are the things you like, engineer those situations and try to do them as much as possible. Try to create the sort of games that you enjoy and just give yourself goals within that. If there's a cool play that excites you, try to pull that off. Even in the midst of, yeah, you'll be mismacroing and making mistakes, but give yourself these different goals in the game so that it isn't just about win the game or lose the game. Whether you're improving or not improving, it shouldn't be about victory or defeat. If it's about that binary, StarCraft just, it's a more stressful experience. It's so easy to get in that judgmental mindset and to have these crazy ups and downs, which for me at least leads to a lot of anxiety when it comes to playing the game, rage, frustration, and all these fears start to well up over, man, what's gonna happen in this game? Is it gonna be that Battlecruiser rush that made me feel worthless yesterday? If I play that again, I'm gonna be so upset. We don't wanna have that clouding over our entire mentality as a player. All right, guys, so move the goalposts, try to be compassionate for yourself, try to make sure you're focusing on things other than just win or lose, as well as a bunch of these other suggestions. Hopefully you can combine these to help you get a little bit off the anxiety train and more into the, hey, why am I really playing the game? And let's remember to actually have fun while we do it. So now we've broken down all three categories. Let me know which one you fall into or multiple categories, most of all, or if there's another category I entirely missed. I'm sure I didn't cover anything near everyone. Everyone has ladder anxiety. Everyone has anxiety that's different. So please let me know if I missed something, you know, or none of this really applied to you. And let me know exactly how you'd word that question. And I can always potentially do a follow-up video. So now before we finish, there's one last piece of advice that is game changer. It is an absolute game changer. And is do not play StarCraft in a bubble. The game is hard. There's so much stuff going on in it. It's hard to learn. Don't play it on your own. Get involved in a community. So join my Discord. Links are down below in the comments in the description. Get in there, talk to the clan manager, see if you're interested in joining my clan or find out about the other clans in the StarCraft scene. Go on the red subreddits, the Team Liquid forums and elsewhere and find other communities that are on your time zone that are regularly playing around the time you play so you can hop on and play some games so you can learn from each other so that you can tap into the absolutely gigantic shared pool of knowledge that encompasses the StarCraft 2 community. And that's just gonna be huge for you. It's gonna be massive because when you're frustrated, if you're in a clan or you're in some chat channels, you talk about Starcraft freely, you can just be in there, man, roaches are so broken, dude. And you know what? Those people who you know with, they know you have a relationship, they'll be like, <laughs> you had some bad games, dude. And they'll give you some advice. And you know, you feel camaraderie, you feel like you're not so alone in the struggle of improving at Starcraft or playing the game. And you've got this constant like sources of information getting thrown your way. People link you videos, people be like, oh, you gotta try this build, it absolutely kicks butt. It's a much more fun game when you're not playing it in isolation. When you're in isolation, it's easy to get really judgmental in yourself, super mentally harsh and unreasonable. When you're playing in a community, it's much easier to just always see a path of less resistance forwards both mentally and in terms of the actual stra actual strategies that you're playing. Okay, everybody, so that wraps us up for this video. Let me know if you've got any other ideas for other videos uh, to do with mindset or anxiety that we could cover in the comments. Don't forget to check out the description in the comments below. We've got tons of links of resources and some videos to help you guys out. And of course, if you guys want to watch more content to get you started on your journey, to be a bit more focused and enjoying StarCraft rather than just lost in the big sea, check out one of the videos. We've got Bronze to GM over there over there, I think over, yeah, up here. I think up here as well. So we've got, got some Bronze to GM videos. Click on one of your choice. Thanks for watching everybody. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye and good night.